is the Glass Cannon Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Haunted City on the Glass Cannon Network. Haunted City, where we spook you out and give you chills and thrills by playing this game, Blades in the, Blades in the Dark by John Harper and Evil Hat and Sean Nittner and all kinds of great people over at Evil Hat Studios. Blades in the Dark, the game of outrageous scores in a city of ghosts. Buy your copy wherever fine games are sold. Did I mention that my name is Jared Logan and with me I have my <laughs> incredible players, actors, improvisers, raconteurs, fashion icons? Please welcome uh, Abu Salim, Josephine McAdam, and Ross Bryant, everybody. He's a fashion icon. Hey, that, was, that was a new one. Yeah. yeah. We'll take you guys, it. I, mean. I think you guys dressed really well. Oh. Well, thank, thank you. you. My, my top has a hole in it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I told the that off. That's not a thumb hole. If I do that, people are just like, he ripped yeah. his shirt. That's actually pretty cool, actually. I quite like that. Yeah, there is a Abu fashionable just put his style thumb through the hole, and it yeah, looks like he it. has like a hand no, stirrup. It's just distress. Now. I'm gonna stop. Ex- yeah, distress. There is a fashionable style I've noticed in LA now. Where oh it looks yes, where, where people who are like obscenely wealthy are wearing clothes that look like they've yes. been like had acid thrown on them. <laughs> I feel like, like that's like been around for some holes time now. Yeah. The it's amount of times pricey. I've seen people, like I remember I was, this was, I think I was what, 16? And I used to own these these jeans, which had holes in them. Me and too. I remember just thinking to myself, this is the most stupidest piece of clothing I've ever worn. In my, like it ain't, isn't keeping me warm. Like why am I exposing myself? And then when you see people, with, now when I see people with it, I'm like, what's wrong with you? What, what are you doing? Do yeah. we just sound really old right now? I think we do. Talking, yeah. Your clothes are damaged. Why do you have holes in them? Yeah, why are you paying for it? I could, I could cut that up and give, you know, you could pay 60 pounds for it, please. Are you going to go to anyway. school like that? I don't think so, young lady. Um, <laughs> wow. I, I, I've noticed that um, people who I can tell are definitely not into black metal are wearing black metal logos. You know, that kind of like oh, really yeah. stylized, crazy Illegible writing. black metal oh. logos are really oh, man. having every, a moment. Every time I see like someone wearing a Metallica top, I'm like, do you know who they are? Really? Do you yeah. really know who Metallica are? Y'all just you know. gatekeeping fashion. I know. I know. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, Jared said we're fashion icons, man. Like <laughs> He started this. Yeah, I'm sorry, um, actually, but if you're not real. three Dark Throne songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Name three Dark Throne songs. Exactly. Uh, Well, here we are at the big finale. This is the finale of our entire season. Are people nervous? Are they excited? Or is someone inexplicably angry? Yeah, you know what? I'm angry. Yeah, weird. Yeah, I know. It's weird. I'm really, I'm really vexed. Yeah. Like, I can't believe that this is the end. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's not fair, damn it. It isn't it's just fair. okay to have feelings about that. It's okay to have feelings about that. Well, it might not be the forever end, but it, it's uh it's it's an ending of sorts. It's an ending of this season of some of the storylines we set up here. Um, I'm scared we're gonna die. We're not gonna what? die. He says, cut to two hours later. <laughs> don't <laughs> I say love that. You. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't um, say Falcons that. Get shot in the face. No. Uh-oh. What could go wrong? <laughs> I just built a large bomb. That's very true, actually. Yeah. yeah. Explosives explosives tend to deal out an amount of damage that uh, is not uh, conducive to surviving. But, you know, you can always resist the consequence, you know, uh, and then oh get God, incapacitated yeah. via stress. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty mighty resistance, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's, like a, it's a real resistance right there. <laughs> I've definitely been thinking about all the ways right. that I can Remember. put these characters through the ringer for this final episode. So I Remember wish resistance. good luck to you all. Um, I'm and, writing uh, down the word resistance. There's no way we're forgetting about this mechanic today. Just play smarter. Th- just play smarter than I I do. Uh, it shouldn't be that tough. I'm pretty stupid. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> 
I, I, I'm, I'm glad, Jared, that you said play smarter than I do and not what I'm pretty sure was your first yes. inclination, which is play smarter than normal. <laughs> That's what I thought. I know, right? You guys are you perfect. I love, I love the, uh, the total chaos uh, that gets created every time. But this is, uh, <laughs> is going to be a really high stakes job. Uh, and let's get into the details in just a second after yeah. I say this. A thousand years ago, this was a land of beauty and magic. Then came the cataclysm that blotted out the sun and ripped open the gates to the land of the dead. The city of Duskfall is a metropolis of tenements and factories surrounded by crackling lightning barriers. Outside the city is a wasteland of the ravening undead. Inside the city is a teeming hive of scum and villainy, intrigue and corruption. Life is cheap in a city ruled by death. The sun is gone. The only thing that shines in Duskfall are the blades in the dark. And here oh, we so are. Good, man. So good. Uh, yes. Oh, I'm fully turgid now. And we can uh, <laughs> slide. <laughs> we can slide right into our recap. So oh, the remnant lost their member, Selyak Khan. There was a schism between them as to whether or not to follow the chthonic entity known as the Builder, whether or not to turn the crew into a cult. Valkos and Juliet split with Selyak uh, and took on Ekphelia, formerly Ophelia, formerly Ekaprag Wodi, <laughs> a composite being made from a possessing ghost and the body of Ekaprag Wodi. Together they form a vampire. In their last score, the remnant cleared an area of tunnels of uh, hollows that were dwelling down there and came into contact with another vampire who apparently lives in the city. Ekphelia and that vampire became friends and feasted on a human body together. <laughs> the next thing on the remnant's docket right. was a pretty big job, a, a, a sort of gigantic mission, the one we're going to see today. The Remnant was tasked by their patron, the Path of Echoes, with destroying a new Sparkrite facility that has been funded by a proposal from Una Feros, Juliette Bell Rose's arch enemy. And the new Sparkrite facility apparently has created weaponry that is even more effective against spirits and ghosts something that the Remnant often seeks to protect, particularly Selyak, who has left them, see, sought to protect ghosts. And it also has uh, like a ghost prison inside of it. You guys prepared in several smart ways. Ekphelia snuck into the Charter Hall offices of the Spark yeah. Rights and got mm. full schematics for the entire building, the entire facility that you're about to enter. And in addition, got some of Una Faros's notes, which spoke of her investigating, tracking down, and trying to figure out how to neutralize a new powerful entity that clues were telling her had infiltrated the city. What could that entity be? Question marks appear above my head. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Juliette Bell Rose just got to crafting, pulled out those crafting rules, and built a large bomb, but we needed a mm -hmm. tier five bomb. And in order to get the coin necessary to upgrade her role to a tier five, she had to go to Selyak Khan. Selyak Khan, who agreed to give her the coin in his pocket in exchange for her finger. And when we <laughs> left the remnant last, Juliet's finger had been lopped off. So. For Should just I? a moment, before we get right into the score, I want to know where Juliet is. I mean, you're back to the grotto. You're you're back to just right before you go out for the score. How's your finger doing? Um, uh, I think it's well. So it's it's this one, right? Like, so I think there's just I don't know some sort of cover, a bandage, or maybe she even put um, like not an actual prosthetic, but like um. A, a, a metal sort of extension onto it mm. so that should she need, but it's like a tool part. It's like one of her fine tools. Okay, she's yeah. She's like put right there. 
<clears throat> I'm going to be the nicest GM in the world, and I'm not going to uh, put harm on your sheet. I'm going to. We can. We can assume that there was a little bit of time between when Selyak took your digit and when this score this is about score. to happen. Okay. Yeah, you still have the weeping. Yeah, I'm still uh, weeping. Harm. I mean, uh, you still have the <laughs> weeping harm. Uh, but yes, I love that. Uh, a silver finger. Who's got my silver finger? It's it's a tool. It's a tool. It's a tool. It's a it's a fine tool. <laughs> it's a it's fine a useful tool. tool. It, it, it opens up and there's like little keys inside and I think you know what that sounds drops awesome. Poison yeah, I'll take that. And Swiss Army <laughs> finger. And yeah, give, tiny missiles. Um, give me a Swiss Army knife. Yes, that'd great. be great. Okay, great. Swiss Army finger is in position. So just so everybody knows how Juliet is dealing with that, and guys. It's a big score today, so I think we should get right into the score and let us start. Like, wait. remember, you have schematics of the place, you have uh, a bomb. Well, wait, that's what I want to know before we get right into it. What yes. does the bomb look like? How large is it? It's and okay, should I so define the, some of that? So I'll describe what the book says, and then it's very short. It's just it says large bomb, large explosive charge with a long fuse. That's all that it specifies. A long uh. fuse? Are we talking like a <laughs> length of cord that you light? I because guess I so. hope we fuse, are. <laughs> fuse could also imply like an electroplasmic wire, just right. as long as it's a, like it has a long fuse for me to detonate it or something. Yes, let's a long do, fuse so I can detonate it from afar. Okay, so it's it's like one of those wily e. coyote uh, <laughs> where you press down the Plunger. stopper and it blows up. I know that, I just did that motion, but. How about a how about a button? How about a This is going to end terribly. Device that is Here's what I want to say. You guys spent the coin and the effort to create a tier 5 bomb. Mm -hmm. I know that the book says a long fuse, but what I would like to do is say a fuse can be interpreted metaphorically okay. and therefore I'm going to allow Julia Bellrose to define how the bomb Ooh, okay. is activated and blows up. Nice. This yeah. is something that we could just find out during the score if you'd rather. Should we do that? Well, no, I think I want to shoot okay. myself in the foot ahead of time um, because, you know, I know that we're going to get into so much hijinks that, like, I'll be trying to save my ass later, but I think it's better if it's just decided ahead of time. I think strategically, I should say, there's a remote detonation. We just, like, walk away, you know, can detonate it from wherever. But um, I think we have to like input it, like set it off, and then we have a certain amount of time before it goes off. It's a, it's a, a timer. timer. Holy because, shit! Because I think that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. That is fun. Yeah, especially someone's for the GM. definitely gonna die today. Like that is like <laughs> <laughs> clear. I love it. I love it. There is no a timer. I'm not defining the time right now. I think we can set the time. So yeah, sure, you can set the you time. Know. Um, <clears throat> I, I do want to say, since it's a large bomb, I think that there's a little bit of technical work that goes into setting it up, setting the timer, all okay. of that in the location, okay? I don't think you can just, like, drop it and run, you know? Um, that said, you know about this Sparkrite facility. I'll describe it a little bit for the listeners and viewers again, just so they know. An old building, an old firehouse in Coleridge has been converted into this Sparkrite facility. And it uh, they built walls around it. This is all, you've seen all of this in the schematics. They've built walls around it. They gutted it. They put new infrastructure and, you know, um, machinery inside of it. And um, definitely... As you might imagine, it is protected by electroplasmic technology and uh, it is guarded to, to make sure that no one can get in and, and steal these proprietary designs, this, this proprietary technology, and mess with it. Uh, you know that somewhere inside of it is some sort of machine that acts as a ghost prison. And you know that various spark rights inside are probably using a new type of technology that is more effective than a lightning hook at capturing a ghost. Um, it it uh, is probably more powerful and more dangerous, this type of technology. Uh, a lightning hook is something like the rail jacks use. It's literally like a length of electrified, like a little electrified noose on like a stick and they can use mm -hmm. it to grasp a ghost and like force it into a spirit bottle. Whatever the spark rights have developed, it is uh, way more advanced 
and more dangerous. That is what you know going in. And now I would like for you to choose your plan. Assault, deception, stealth, occult, social, or transport. Please go transport this time for the first time. Please, please, please. Please, let me just see one transport. What do you guys think? Someday. Uh Um, We have these underground tunnels, so... Maybe you stealth. do. And the underground tunnels, it's worth mentioning, are worth two extra coin on a sabotage job, which I'm thinking this probably definitely counts as. And mm-hmm. just to remind people, the Path of Echoes promised you six coin total. You know, mm-hmm. two of which. It was actually eight no. coin, but two yeah. goes to their, their <laughs> tribute. So um, if you get that plus two coin, you will earn eight coin on this job. Huge. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so assault, got- deception, stealth, occult, social, or transport. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, my friend. So we've got the tunnels. We've got the schematics. And we're attempting to set off a bomb. That implies we're going to sneak into getting close, deposit this bomb, get out before the timer goes. Um, yeah. So that sounds like a that sounds like a stealth. Yeah. Or that sounds like a deception. Um, I think a stealth. Stealth, I think, sounds like the logical one. But how big are these tunnels? <laughs> are they big enough for, say, a truck to come in and drive through? Are you making this transport? Right no, now? Indeed, transport. <laughs> I'm just saying. Transport a bomb. The like, tunnels that you cleared and the tunnels that were part of the network were in six towers, were they not? Yes, they were. There are water and bridges between six towers and. So they're not. You can't put a truck. You can't. You can put a boat through, but you can't necessarily put a. Uh, speaking of boats, don't we have a boat? Yeah, you probably have a little dinghy. I'll, I'll give that to you <laughs> no, for think- free. We got a free. Let dinghy. me let me just say this. Like- I'm not saying that you can't use some sort of tunnels because you guys are good at moving about in tunnels, uh-huh. but the tunnels that you have secured or, or you know useful for your covert drops they are not necessarily useful to now oh. come in from the bottom at every score okay cool they won't yeah. they won't lead us to okay. well but maybe they'll get us close type deal. i'm looking at the map of duskfall and i definitely see some uh some waterways between coal ridge and I six see. towers I see. so i think that I think that that's probably unlikely, unless unless somehow your you know uh, tunnels go all the way beneath canals, which I doubt. Gut instinct, stealth. Stealth. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's okay. what my guts. That's all we need to know, too. right? That's stealth. all we need to know in the Blades in the Dark system is that you are going to go stealth, and then I need the detail. So the detail might be that you're going to try a subterranean route. What is the point of infiltration for your stealth job? We, we have the schematics, so that's yeah. that's yeah. Um, so wait, hold on. When we got maps of the tunnels, are there no tunnels in Coleridge that we could go into? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I said th- there are okay. tunnels, and you could you could try that, and maybe the schematics even detail a tunnel beneath. That would be well a detail. Cool. Okay. They're just not the tunnels you got access to yeah. earlier. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Then. Right. Cool. That's great. Then let's go in from the bottom. Started from yeah. the bottom. Now we all. Okay, great. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna go in here. from. <laughs> you're gonna go in through from the bottom. Your your um, your schematics say that there should be some sub basements, and you can kind of come in through uh, the underground tunnels, which riddle Duskfall. So, um, very good. If, anything else we want to add before I start putting together the engagement role? Um, oh yeah, because this is where you start knocking things off for. Um, oh God, what's, <laughs> what would their weak point even be? Remember, we, if we, if we take, keep that in mind, we get a better starting role. We're trying to exploit weaknesses and, uh, and play to our strengths. Well, our I strengths think are, we, we are, we are coming in. Yeah, we're we coming in knowing, plans. like, we have so much shit to them. We have right? plans. That's mm-hmm. true. That's true. We have the, the layout. We also have Unifaros as well. Like, we know what pisses <laughs> her off. Like, you they know, are we, literally our rivals so mm-hmm. we can we can fuck them over very, very that's well. really interesting mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. you have been like kind of watching her for a while you've been right. destroying her rep that was one of your long-term projects that this will i be the linchpin of i would assume but also you like, know what i mean uh mm-hmm. Akfilia has been watching her in particular and that's knows true. 
even though the yeah. clock isn't full, knows details about her schedule, mm-hmm. her cohorts, her comings and goings. I mean, I know her well. We we exactly we, former we can't be enemies without knowing each other. <clears throat> yeah, and Valkos knows her name, so. <laughs> Right. So this okay, all right. concludes <laughs> our I'm going to see you in Paros. Please let me in. All right. Let's do the engagement roll. I will take what you just said into account. So one die for free. Then um, I'm going to give you one die for having schematics to the whole uh, to the whole building, to kind of knowing their upcoming plans, to cool. kind of, you know a lot about what's going on. So I'm going to give you a die for that. I'm going to give you another die because you are targeting Una Faros, who you've been shadowing for weeks, and you probably know how she would set a place like this up, what kind of, uh, you know, effort she would make and the way that she would administer it. However... For a reason I'm not going to reveal to you, I'm taking a die away, <laughs> and I think just one. So that leaves you with two dice for the engagement roll. Remember, if you roll a one to three here, you're going to end up in a desperate position to begin. If you roll a four or five, you'll end up in a risky one. And if you order a, uh, roll a six or a critical, <laughs> you'll be in a controlled position to begin. Okay. So, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> Our crew the are crawling along. Soundtrack, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got it. Our crew are crawling through tunnels beneath Coal Ridge, and I think Coal Ridge tunnels, mines, not sewers, okay. mines. That's good to know. Jeez. So okay. you know, okay. you're you're like breathing in dust. It's old abandoned mines. There's the you know rotting timbers holding up ceilings full of loose scree and rock, uh, and you crawl along here and. I rolled a four and a five. You are in a risky position okay. to begin. And so you arrive okay. uh, together at a door. And the door definitely leads into one of the sub basements <clears throat> of this Coleridge Spark Rights facility. But what you perhaps didn't realize, or maybe you did realize it, it doesn't matter. What you see is that the door is a heavy vault type door that they've installed between their building and these underground tunnels. And that it definitely looks to be augmented with some sort of Sparkrite technology. The threat is that it is trapped or alarmed in some way. Mm -hmm. What action are you going to use to get through it? Well, I think, I think, I think I should go take a look at it. Um, it's going to be gonna use tinkering to to assess and and get the figure out tech of this. Yeah. See if there's a trap and how to uh, using my knowledge of being a spark ride as well and what we yeah would put absolutely. In place. Yeah, so Juliette Bell Rose crawls forward, um, Valkos oh. and yes. We didn't do our loadouts. Thank you. Right now, tell me what your loadouts are. <laughs> I'm going heavy. I have a bomb on me, so that seems like I have to. Yeah, I'm going heavy. I'm going normal. Normal. <laughs> Very good. Yes, because Ekphelia might be the one that has to go, Hello, I just wandered in here. Uh, what an interesting exactly. place. And okay. uh, a random note, um, I don't think Ophelia, or, or Juliet has has shown that she had her severed face. I think she's been Wait. wearing gloves this whole time. Actually, okay. I um, I have an idea. Um, so that, that Tinker, I love the Tinker to, to figure out, but I love that Tinker to get through. Because the goal now is just to, like, understand the security apparatus of this door. Right, because I think there's a trap right now. Yeah. I am going to try to uh, get that with my um, vampiric trait of arcane (gasps) sight. I'm going to take one stress. This I've only used this before to hear, to reach into Uh people's minds and see their thoughts. But this also allows me to do things such as see in pitch darkness sense the presence of invisible things, intuit the location of a hidden object, etc. In this case, you think one of those etc. just might be intuit the um, spark crafty security that might be um, protecting a certain door. Interesting. You're a technomancer, Here. too? Jesus. Well, you can see hidden things, right? That's, that's right. 
which I take to mean, you know, energies, auras, <clears throat> things like that. I think not only spiritual things, but yes, energetic currents. Yes. And so, <laughs> and, and you spend a stress to do this? I do. Okay, so you spent your stress, and Ekphelia, you look at the door, and it, your sight sort of changes to that sort of like negative light kind of vision, you know? And what you are seeing is a lot of energy, a tremendous amount of crackling blue energy moving through the door and then moving up in like, you know, right angles and like lines leading up into the facility, a web of the mm. of this energy leading up into the facility. Okay. So maybe maybe even as like Juliet is like getting out tools and stuff it's like hold. So I'm like reaching out with my mind and seeing for a moment the the energy fields um, crackling through this door and following them up into the building. Um, and so it seems then that the and Ophelia was a spark right herself. Mm -hmm. Seeing the, um, seeing this energy, it looks as though it's being fed and returning that current through a point at the top of the door. So, um, if you could find a way of shortening that circuit up there, mm -hmm. then you might be able to de-electrify the door itself. And, and I'll then, just remind my players, you had the schematics a while ago, so you probably knew that these doors were wired like this. What were you going to mm -hmm. say, Valkos? I was going to say, like, if you, if, did you, did you kind of let us all know that? Did you say that publicly? Yes. Or? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Then I kind of say, and then Valkos kind of be like, or oh, you can perhaps maybe find a way of having them believe that the door is still closed, mm. but having it open for us to walk in, maybe. Yes. Yes. Okay, I just need to route it to something so that it doesn't interrupt the flow. Um, naturally, she knows the way to do this in a way that Josephine does not. Um, I'm going to now attempt to do exactly what Valko suggested, which is tinker with it in such a way that if we open the door, it doesn't read as having been opened. How are you doing that? What kind of thing are you creating or setting up? Um, um, what tool are you using yeah. would be the easiest I'm way I'm using to... fine tinkering tools. Sure. I and want a little more detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I mean, I'm looking, I'm just looking at the list of things that we have in general. Perhaps an... Uh, an... Um, we say like a, uh, what do they have under tinkering tool? They also just have to, okay. Maybe like an arcane implement that it like flows into. An arcane implement. That's something that the leech That's, carries on them? No, it's something that everyone carries on them. An arcane, <laughs> arcane implement. implement. Okay, it's, what is the arcane implement? What is it? Um, I, <clears throat> so they have like vials of electroplasm, spirit ball, or whatever, things that can contain electroplasm. So then I would like to have one that's innate, like perhaps a special shape, like a loop almost, so that it just feeds back into itself. <laughs> I love it. Uh, oh yeah. If that's an arcane implement. Boy, that's uh, defining it kind of wildly. Right. Uh, Spirit okay. bottles and, and vials of electroplasm. Those are act as arcane implements, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They like describe a specialty them. bottle. Well, let's do it with the roll. You're going to tinker, right? Yes, I will tinker. This is a level four security system. Oh. You are using a fine, fine tool against it. Fine tinkering tools. It is still outside of your ability to affect it unless you figure out something else that you've done to take okay. the quality down mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we are what are we we're tier one it's yes. tier you said four tier four but your fine tool now has already two. brought you up to two yeah so we need to find a way of bringing it maybe down one and us up one perhaps um would i can i argue that by knowing the system of it all we got the schematics the schematics Okay. Yeah. Yes. Bring now, it it one. That, that'll, that'll bring you up one. Absolutely. So now you have a limited effect. We know the precise okay. way to okay. position to put our little bottle. Um, what if I 
You could change Employ. position. For better oh, yes, effect. that's true. I'll switch the position for a better effect. Great. Let's make it desperate. Okay. And I just, <laughs> great. First, like, first you, action, we, we got a role that started us at risking. We're like, you know what? Make it desperate. Do you, guys, do you guys know what a Klein bottle is? Uh-uh. Yes. This is a real thing. It's, it's a bottle that glaciers make that you pour things in and they the, in, the inside becomes the outside. It's like a glass Mobius strip. It's like an infinity bottle. I think Whoa, this is a spirit bottle yes. that is a Klein bottle. Yes. So the energy goes in and out, oh, back yes. in and in and out. Um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yes, okay. and if this fails, you will take harm because it is now desperate because this there's a lot of current floating through this door so not only are you using your tinker to kind of pick the lock and get it open Mm -hmm. which is not easy you're also having to reroute this energy Mm -hmm. would you like Mm -hmm. to push yourself or would you uh care for a devil's bargain does or does ophelia want to assist me in this Ophelia could definitely think Ophelia could assist you. Um, My fellow Sparkwright. That's right. Um, <clears throat> the old ways. Uh, I'll assist. Okay, great. Uh, how are you assisting? Um, I will. Uh, let's see. Just how, two heads how are better than one. How tall is this door? Too huge. Okay. I'm I'm lifting. Lifting them up on my shoulders. <laughs> Am I no, on your uh, shoulders? <laughs> that's it's a big vault door, is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could be essentially like you know, one person is is lock picking, and essentially that using the time. Well, I then, think it's a, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. or it's you also like you know, it's two. a paint me a picture of where the ele- where the electroplasm flows. Oh, interesting. Yeah, right. You know, and and sort of helping me see exactly where it is because Ophelia saw that not. Juliet, you know, or I think perhaps, maybe this is the thing where like the timing has to be just right with the opening mm-hmm. and the placement. If this is like almost like a wire that you touch to the circuit, it captures the electroplasm. Mm-hmm. But like you have to do it at the precise moment the door yes. comes open. Perhaps and if you're a split it, second off, yes. the alarm sounds. Yeah, perhaps it's I'll like give you a devil's bargain, and you see and the, that the devil's bargain is if you fail, both of you take harm, not just Juliet. So I'm assisting, and we're taking a devil's bark. Yeah, do you, do you if want, you want. If you, do want. you ex- I, I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to accept that devil's bargain. Do you accept that devil's bargain, Ross? Sure, I'll take it. Yeah, Let's scared. go. Holy Let's shit. Go. Okay. I'm like watching right. this. You're like, both so this, holding the door. That's why that devil's bargain. And that would add, ex- that here we go. Extra dice. Dice. Yeah. yeah. The door pops open, and that was an enormous roll of many dice, but the best you did was a four. So that means okay. success with a complication. I can't believe there was nothing better than that. Okay. <sighs> yes. Success with a complication. The success oh with a boy. complication is that the the energy running through your Klein bottle is so much that it starts to crack and it starts to kind of disintegrate in your hands. You're able to reroute the electricity long enough for all three of you to get through the door and shut it again. But as you do that, a piece clunk comes off of your Klein bottle, that's not going to work again if you come to one of these doors. You'll have to figure something else out. Okay. 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 So it was a one one. way. It was one way. You're in. We're in. in. You're in a dark room. The only thing you can discern, because maybe one of you bumps into it, is that there are columns down in this room. Um, They are uh, square. They're not like, uh, you know, Roman, uh, holding up a very low ceiling. And there's no light. Okay. No light. Okay. Um, can you see in the dark? I can if I spend stress. I am, um, oh, okay. but I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna take off on my loadout that um that headlamp that I used down in the caverns. Um, oh, so good. I'll t- I'll get that glow going. Um, okay. You do you do so, and now you see uh, stairs going up to a higher level across uh, the the other end of this chamber. This is some sort of sub basement. You see crates full of machinery parts, and you also see what looks like part of a very large machine, but it's like the guts of it that hang down into this room. Yeah. Um. And th- those guts, the th- those pipes, those those like um. Uh, heating units and things like that lead up into a larger structure above. 
Okay, well, so let's look at our schematics. And we would would have, like, I mean, we yeah. know, like... Um, Where are, like, yeah, what is this a part of, like... Can you paint us a little schematic picture of, like, where we are in the building? Yeah, looking at your schematics, you realize that you have come down to sub-basement two. (laughs) Sub-basement one and two contain part of the machinery that lead up to the ghost prison in the first sub-level above. Your mission was to destroy the facility. Right. Right. If the bomb went off down here, it would not destroy the it facility, wouldn't reach it. but okay, it that's would what I'm destroy trying to... the ghost prison. The, the prison, okay. Um, what so, level, knowing knowing the breadth of the bomb, what level do I have to plan it at for it to destroy the facility? Let's find out. Just. I'm not I'm not going to tell you that. I think okay. that you, you, you've already figured it out and you can show me. But right now, okay. where do you go and what do you do? Uh, so... You've got the bomb on your person, uh, mm-hmm. Juliet. I guess maybe in like a pack, a p- pack of some kind. Yeah, I think it's like a back. Pa- it's probably like just mounted on my back. Yeah. Okay. I, great. No, actually, let me take it because I'm a bigger guy and I can take it on my loadout. So she won't I let you take it. Message. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm serious. God damn it! <laughs> she's got it. Uh, ooh, baby, she's got it. <laughs> Valkos keeps insisting. I can just take the pack. Just let me no, have the no, pack. Stop it! Stop it! Here. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> um, watching watching the level of intensity of this bickering in the dark is, <laughs> is like, feel, yeah, just like hmm. interesting. Uh, so let's uh, let's uh, do. I think I'm still going to take some time to look at this equipment because if this is where it leads, this is what leads to the prison above. I almost wonder, perhaps, if we break this down, who knows what they have caged above. Perhaps it's the amount of turmoil that we could uh, cause by bringing down this prison right now. In order, and to of course, in. that's what you always planned to do, mm-hmm. because this has all been yes, planned ahead of that's time. That's true. Mm. I'm gonna, I'm going to employ part one of our plan, and I'm going to start uh, seeing if I can, yeah somehow dismantle this uh, or just what, shut it down this, this yeah, it, shut yeah. it down from down here so okay the, we're um, gonna shut down the ghost prison from below and from, what I'm going it, to it do is I'm going and th- that chaos will provide us cover to move the yes, bomb into to, place to plant a bomb yes yeah, of course that's a great plan I'm going to employ Alkahest um, it stops the effects of any other alchemical in this case I'm hoping electroplasm that's probably running through this whole prison very interesting. What action are you going to use to um, uh, use your alkahest to insert your alkahest into the uh, machinery? I am going to use Tinker for sure. Um, should I also employ... Let's see, I need to count how many items I'm using. One. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, should I use my if some fine wrecking tools to bring up this tier? Because I assume this is a high tier. Yeah. I think situation. that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Okay, the Alkahest is tier three. Mm-hmm. I'll and use fine, fine wrecking, wrecking tools. tools. Okay. I think you can. I think you can have standard effect on this thing. The threat is that if this doesn't work, you're going to have to find a new approach, right? If this doesn't work right now, because um, I think that somehow you have to introduce the alkahest into the system mm-hmm. and you didn't you, you, your schematics weren't so detailed that you were positive this was going to work. Okay. So really yes. you have to kind of punch a hole or like yep. get your stuff inside and it might not work down here. You'll have to find a right. new approach. Okay. Um, as soon as like some pipes going up to, you know, so I would just like to yeah, feed it into that. But it's Coots. risky, right? It's not. Yes. It's yeah, not, yeah. It's yeah. not controlled. So I think there needs to be an even bigger threat than that. The bigger threat than that is that um, if you fail here, you may draw attention. <clears throat> and I Why will create a clock right now called Facility Alerted. Why don't you two go on ahead while I do mm. this? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, lover spat. A lot of bickering. I know this is great. Or like, um, just come, 
Falcus, don't you have faith that, um, that, uh, Julia can do what she's been trained to do? I have enough faith. However, I'm not going to leave one of our people behind. I should think that everyone is, should undertake the efforts to which they're best suited, but of course, if you think we should all stick together. The facility alerted clock is in place. It has four segments. This place you got a five. Is, you got a five. You got a five. Success <laughs> with a consequence. You able to introduce Alkahest into the machine's guts, but you have to make a lot of loud banging sounds. <laughs> and so I am going to go ahead and tick up the facility alerted <laughs> clock by Oh, let's call it one okay. segment for right now. Okay. So there are three segments left. Um, the Halkahest splashes into some sort of cooling unit, and it starts to be circulated throughout the ghost cage machine. And um, you hear a lot of rattling inside of it and a lot of sloshing of liquid, and you think that what you've done has worked. What happens next? Okay. Let's, let's continue upwards. Yes. All right. Um, coming up into uh, the next sub basement above, you see that this place is mainly dominated by the guts of the machine, and that as you arrive up here, um, suddenly there's like a little gauge on the side that pops off and steam starts shooting out of it. Your alkahest is working and it's moving its way up <laughs> through the guts of the ghost cage. There are steps going up into the uh, main lower level above. These steps are wi wider. They're not like a little kind of rickety staircase. There's now like mm. kind of nice worked stone steps leading into the facility proper, which is directly above you. Great. Wait, of course we know part of the plan was that we knew that as soon as we mess with this, there's probably going to be people that are going to be sent down to check on it. So shall yep. we uh, wait to surprise and sabotage? That's a good idea. Great. Um, I, can I assume a position in the stairwell in my fine shadow cloak, which I'm ticking off on my uh, on my um, uh, loadout? And of course, the lantern is going off as I wait in the shadows to see if anyone is coming down to check on anything? You can Wait. and you do. What does that do? What does your fine shadow cloak define Ooh, yeah. as? Yeah. It increases my um, my stealthiness, makes me harder to Ooh. see. Uh, I can find the letter of the that. law in the book. Uh, I love it. No, I was just curious, you know, it just sounds awesome. Okay, this is a tier four facility, so I'm gonna make a fortune roll to see how many Guards, or actually, I think that they would be technicians, right? Because this is their um, machine. How that many technicians? Yes, that was the yeah. plan for yeah. it to be technicians that respond. So let's see how many technicians respond. And I'm rolling. My highest is a five. So let's go yeah. ahead and call it five. Five different technicians okay. all respond. That's fine. Oh, um, boy. And right, uh, right now, you hear their uh, steps on the, uh, you know, coming down into the sub basement and they are running like all in a big group, like shouting uh, to try to figure out what's wrong with their very important, very sensitive machine. And I would just like to, uh, I know that uh, Ekphelia is positioned on the uh, on the steps in a shadow cloak mm -hmm. and our friends uh, Juliette Juliette you have your standstill poison and yes. you're ready to shoot and Valkos has his knife yeah yeah I'm gonna say the the last one down gets hit with the standstill because I don't want it to you know if we can do this as stealthy like one at a time are we using a group action here or are we all making oh. our own roll if that's the case yeah. then rather than the last one if I take the last if I if you knows Yes. No, it's group take, action. Yeah, let's Why do a group not? action of it, of trying to yeah. take out as many people before they are aware of the fact that we're taking yes. them out. It's the who's stealth using, kills who's, in the game. Um, who's leading the group action? Can I do it because I'm melee based and it's a skirmish? Yes. Okay, so everyone will roll skirmish. Okay. I actually those have a dot in that now. Will, there you go. Yes, those that fail will uh, give Valkos a, a point of stress. Uh, right. So as this crowd of technicians runs down, let me have a skirmish roll from Juliette Bell Rose. A Two. fail. <laughs> Valkos, take one, one stress. Okay. Let me have a skirmish roll from Ekphelia. Here we go. Here we go now. 
Let me have that Sorry, skirmish I, roll. I keep, <laughs> I keep I keep pressing it and nothing okay, is roll, happening. Do you have some dice in front I of do. you? I'm sorry. I don't know no, why that's, that's okay. Okay. A four. A four. That is a success, okay. Falco. Okay. So you only take one stress. Effect. And now go ahead and give me your skirmish roll. Risky a standard, Wait. right? Yes, thank you. This is going to be risky uh, for standard effect. If this is successful, none of these guys can hurt you, but if it, it, the threat is that some one of them will get away and alert the rest of the facility. Okay. okay. So success with a consequence for. Uh, success oh with a consequence okay. for okay. means that. Uh, one of them does stop at the top of the stairs and run back. No, no. I, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say that since you succeeded, all of them were taken out, but it was loud. And one of them shouted, ah, right before you managed to put your knife in him. Cool. And so I'm, like, I'm ticking off the facility alerted clock uh, for another segment. You have two segments sh- left. Okay. So I'm like, okay. we need to move. Right. Yep. Um, can I search? Can we search the bodies for any sort of keys or any like key card or anything that will How allow very us smart, to kind of? As you and imagine, and I'm already the, zipping uh, on the one close closest to me in size, yeah, putting on their I'm, yeah, putting their clothes on as well. Yes, let's do it. We're all getting in spark great. Right? You know, you have their clothes and you have their keys. <clears throat> Up we and, go, and we'll secrete them in a storage uh, locker or whatever. You come into a room that is completely white and sterile looking. There's a large metal catwalk leading up into the main floor, the ground floor of the facility, and the ghost cage lines an entire wall. It's huge. It has many different tanks and valves and what looks like a a vault door on the front uh, and like a giant spirit bottle like tube on the front with a uh, locked like canister top on it and someone's back is to you. They are furiously hitting buttons and pulling levers on the spirit cage and you can tell Ekphelia and Juliet just by looking at her that you have already found Una Pharos. <laughs> is she the only person in this in this large room? She just yelled at a bunch of technicians to go down and fix the lower level uh, workings of the thing. And you see her, she yells down, Do you have it stabilized yet? And she is turning around and she's going to see you any second now. Okay. Uh, share a look with Ekphelia like this is it. Uh huh. And I'm gonna just move towards her. I assume in tandem. Well, you're yeah. probably faster than me, but she turns around and she sees you, Juliet, and she sees your companions, and she goes, "Ah, I understand." Hello, Una. So good to see you, Juliet. Don't mm-hmm. do this. Do what? I'm not sure what you're referring to. You don't understand. If you deactivate the ghost cage, something will be released into the city. So many could die. Innocent people, don't do this. Um. Whatever your feelings, Juliet, whatever your hatred for me is, you should know that what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying I'm to do a good thing. I'm gonna put my hand to her throat to like stop her from talking. And well, as soon as I think. You, oh, I read. Go ahead, Ekphelia. Go ahead. Now, do you hear that, Doc? Looks like someone just learned how to plead. I think I like the sound of that. Except the last time that I pled before you, it fell on deaf ears, Pharaohs. Let's see if you find us any more accommodating. Ekphelia, I think you are, you are, as you say, um, completely unaffected. But Juliet, I want you you to know that Unaferos, well, I I don't want to control your character. Has anything Unaferos said maybe caused a bit of doubt? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There is a bit of doubt. I'm not, I'm just like silencing her for a moment. Uh, then what I would like you to do 
is take a level one harm called loss of nerve. What? Okay. You you can resist it if you want. Um. Um. I, no, fine. No, yes, I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Um, she has made you uh, question whether this plan is too dangerous, whether you're going to kill people all over the city by going through with it. <clears throat> I'm just going to use it to sort of like grip on her. And so maybe I loosen it, but I'm holding her face and like, what will be released? Use your words, Una. Be precise. The uh, electroplasmic entities uh, within the uh, ghost cage have likely um, formed into a uh, critical and malignant mass at this point. The size of the spirit that will be released will be of a magnitude I don't think has ever been cataloged in the various um, uh, annals of the city. Where did it come from? A giant ghost. That by being in there, They've joined into some sort of gestalt spirit. They've likely merged into one enormous malignant mass. Oh, you caused this to happen. No, you are causing it to happen. You! You're shutting off the cage. We have to turn it back on now. I'm afraid your cage isn't going to be turned off, Unifera. It's going to fail. A terrible accident is going to take place. It's not going to simply malfunction. It's going to blow apart. All due to the terrible and shoddy planning and workmanship of you and your mechanics. That's what the people of Duskfall will know. And if this thing you claim is in there is released, the one word, the one phrase, that will be on every soul in Akaro's lips is that Una Pharaoh's foolishness and incalcitrance were to blame for this catastrophe. Your epitaph is going to be the shrieks of the people of this city as they curse your name until the moment of their death. Something will be released when this is destroyed. I assure you, Miss Pharaohs, I'm counting on it. And um, I am going to take something out of my loadout, uh, and I'm going to <laughs> lock her to the catwalk, um, oh, so shit. that she is uh, will be in this room when it blows up. And I'm going to pull a pistol and aim it at Ekphelia, and be like, <laughs> "Stop!" What? What is happening? Stop! Ugh. Stop this! This isn't the plan. Too many lives. We're destroying a facility, yes, but we cannot unleash this thing. What is your name again? Una Pharos. Pharos? Who are Whatever. you? Shut up. Help me. It doesn't matter. I'm not helping you. I want an answer. How do we just deal with this thing before we before it unleashes itself upon the city? Surely you, you must it? have something here that can deal with it. Juliet is familiar with this technology. Juliet can turn the machine back on. It doesn't matter about the machine. The machine I will be destroyed. I can reactivate it. Let me, let me loose, untie I pull my second pistol and I'm like, I am not here to fucking discuss what needs to be done and whether I should let someone go or not. You will die tonight. Have comfort in that. But you can either die a martyr, saving many lives, or die the reason, or die as the person who caused all this mess. Now, how do we destroy this malignant force before we destroy everything else? You... you can't? I mean... I mean, it, looking on it will probably result in brain death. It will definitely have a paralyzing effect on anyone and its general emanation. I put, I put something in her mouth. Mm -hmm. oh. I get more. The uh, machine, uh, the machine starts to really rumble and shake. A very nasty clattering sounds are coming Ugh. from it. The I go back downstairs. 
Okay, uh, the bodies, the naked, some With naked the of the technicians <laughs> litter the floor of this basement. What do you do? I am going to attempt to fix it. And we'll find out if she's successful when we come back from this word from our sponsors. Oh, you fuck. <laughs> okay. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up, my best friends? It's your old pal Joe interrupting. I know, I'm sorry. Real quick, I'll be quick. I just have some news about Blood of the Wild. Blood of the Wild, our new quest for the Frozen Flame Adventure Path that Jared is running. It features me, Skid Mar, my good buddy, and my pals, Paula Deming and Mary Lou. We are playing the quest for the Frozen Flame Adventure Path starting January 16th. However, what you may not know is there's some exclusive content leading up to that premiere, including our Session Zero, which is releasing Monday, January 2nd. And then the following week, January 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, we're going to release one-on-one -on -one character build sessions where Jared and each player individually built their characters. You can get all this by going to patreon.com slash glass cannon and subscribing at the $10 tier. We will see you on the tundra. Okay, we're back and we are in a spark right facility where a <laughs> enormous, horrible, malignant, it's been described as malignant several times, colossal ghost creature is about to be released from the spirit prison created by <clears throat> Una Ferris and the spark rights. Juliette Bell Rose has lost some of her nerve and has decided to fix the ghost cage that she just sabotaged. And so you run back down into that sub basement. You yep. look at where you inserted the Alkahest and what do you do? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, well, shoot, I need to get, do I have spark on me? Cause it's, it's a measure of raw electroplasm to get the, get it going again, basically. Yeah, I have spark. So I'm gonna use okay. some spark. So you're using that you're using that that device or that that item, mm -hmm. and then you um, what action are you using? And I will use tinker here. Tinker, and um, we know that your tools are fine, right? Yep. Yep. I still think that this is like a level four in complexity device, and there's one problem now. Yeah. You have less effect. Okay. Oh, you, you planned this. <laughs> he knew you, we were going to sabotage you, you it on the man. way out. And the, wait, yeah, he's, you know, Jared's in our minds at all times. Mm. Okay. Um, um, so I need, and is this already a desperate action, I assume? So I can't try. Yeah. Okay. So I, I need one more thing to like. If you fail this here, up. the machine's going to blow. Okay. Well, I'll push to make it have more effect. That's a good idea. All right, take the two stress. Uh, you can have a standard effect and um, you can roll. Okay. Uh, remember the threat is that if you fail here, there's no way to fix it and this thing is gonna get out. Is there a devil's bargain? The devil's bargain? Um, the devil's bargain is uh, you let me finish clicking up the facility alerted clock and you can have another die. Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> All right, yeah, here we go. I believe in you. Go, 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 go. Success with the consequence. Four, success with the consequence. Success right. with the consequence. The right success the with the consequence is that this is a temporary stopgap solution. Mm -hmm. You have managed to get it going again, but not for very long. I'm creating a new clock that I'm entitling Spirit Cage Explodes. And uh, when that gets ticked all the way up, then the Spirit Cage explodes and the uh, spirit that is inside gets out. Okay. Um, and I'm taking okay. it one segment. Jared? Yes. Almighty DM. GM. Yes. Mm -hmm. Boy. This, oh, what is coming Am here? I aware of what kind of ghost this is with the amount of ghosts that I hang out with? for my advice. Well, you, Una Ferris has kind of described it. They've caught a bunch of ghosts. They put them in this uh, machine and mm. now they've all kind of merged together into one sort of howling, angry, broken cosmic entity. Can I roll my attune in a way of finding out a weakness of breaking them into pieces? 
Yes, oh. I think so. I think you you can. Uh, you want to attune to uh, figure out how to break them into pieces. That's interesting. Um, Split them apart? Yeah. And- yeah, I'll tell you what. I'll create a new clock called Spirit Broken. Okay. Okay? And your first attune will click off a segment of that clock. Okay. Um, but it's not it's not easy to just instantly do it. Um, and I think that you are attuning, you're trying to talk to the thing inside because you can even see some of its corpus moving into that clear yeah. bottle that's on the front of the machine. So you're trying to commune with it. And uh, let me create the spirit broken clock. And if you can, <laughs> if you can keep, uh, you know, uh, like doing things to break its spirit, break it into pieces, as you've said, then maybe you'll uh, you'll be successful. So go ahead and um, ma- make that a tune roll. There should be a threat though. And the threat is here's the threat. I know what I'll do. The clock is only half full. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Two segments are already gone. If you fail, the clock tries to fill up. If it fills up, the spirit I gets see. loose. If okay. you succeed, you take a segment away, right? Okay. <laughs> um, is it controlled or risky or desperate? It's going to be risky. Okay. Standard effect? Standard effect. You'll get can rid I, of the segment. Can I exchange position for greater effect? Um, yeah, you'll take psychological harm by communi- communing and with this can thing. Can I say that? I'll, all right. Okay, cool. For great it's, effect. It's now desperate for great effect. Okay. And can I uh, push myself? Yes, you may. Yes. And uh, okay, great. How uh, are you pushing yourself? I think I am. A, I am actually reliving trauma and the sort of the sense of pain of what I've done with my vice, and I'm using my vice as a way of communing and trying to connect with these spirits. Um, Very good. I I, I think that um, remember when your uncle. Uh, yes. You were confronted with him, and eventually you solved that test. Well, this thing is speaking to you in the voice of your uncle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> four. A four. Success, Success <laughs> with <laughs> a <laughs> consequence. Wait. Did you not have any pips in it? No, you I do. Push I yourself got one. and take a. D- I got oh, yeah. one pip. In you it. should have rolled more dice. You just rolled two. Oh shit! Let me roll one more then. Yeah. Oh. How many pips do you have? I've only got one pip two? though. Yeah, but you didn't you also tip. take a devil's bargain? You took I took a devil's bargain for effect, and then I pushed oh, that's myself right. right. Thank you. Okay, yes, so. you're right. Uh, success with a consequence. Okay. Mm. The success with a consequence uh, is that, yes, you have taken off uh, a bit of this, like, spirit is broken uh, clock. So you just have to take off one more uh, segment of it. Although, remember, it can tick back if, it, if, yep. if things happen. Yep. Uh, but I'm going to tick off another uh, segment on the facility alerted clock. Okay, that's fine. Because <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I think that you're taking time. Like, yeah. time is passing. Una Faros hasn't told people what's going on yet. Those technicians haven't come back up yet. Yep. Yep. The guards mm-hmm. above are going to get uh, curious very soon. You have one segment left in facility alerted. What do you do now? All right. We coming back up. Uh, a technical question or world question: The do ghosts do spirits? Are they always have like one foot in the ghost field? Can they go in and out of the ghost field? Is that or is that a separate place? Like we are in not the ghost field right now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> you know that's something that I don't think is really clearly okay. defined anywhere. Okay. okay. So okay. Uh, you can say that uh, spirits can completely hide themselves. I, this is my ruling. You can say that spirits can completely hide themselves within the ghost field and then they can cross over to cause trouble in the realm of the living. Some spirits just stay wandering around the realm of the living, right? Especially yeah. possessor spirits, uh, things like that. Other spirits move about in the ghost field and just pop out when they feel that they're you know, territory is threatened or something angers their um, sort of uh, psychological uh, composition. All okay. right. With that very metaphysical question a- uh, answered, <laughs> what do you do next? I feel like we've done so. What, Ross, what are you doing? Yeah, well, 
I mean, Ophelia just kind of made a statement being mm-hmm. like, there's no level of destruction that is um, great enough. The yeah. more horrible things happen, if this thing was to break apart, that would be wonderful for Ophelia Ugh. because it would blow back on the legacy of Una Ferris. Um, yeah. But at this Shit. moment, seeing, watching uh, Juliet run down and uh, yeah. and patch the hole, and seeing uh, Valkos enter a, an attunement reverie as he communes with this uh, mm-hmm. being, um, I'm on my way back up, and just kind of uh, ba- walking back. How how horrible this could be. Um, just like noted, um, and uh, what a. Uh, but we want to destroy the facility either way, right? Yes. So let's, I feel like we got to be close to a point where we could blow that. I mean, mm, how the fuck mm. can we blow this thing up without wrecking the, know, that's what wrecking I'm the jail? Is there, it doesn't is, seem yeah, does, <laughs> likely, right? Does um, this, no, does this be a it's problem? Real. But the yeah. thing is, though, if we break it and the spirits are separated, it's easier to yeah, manage. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. So I think we've locked her in. I'm just going to go down. If When you come up, I'm like, the bomb, the bomb. And um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it. I want to set it here. Why, why move further in? Let's set it and and go. We still, we have to. <sighs> you guys you have, have to make so sure much safe. time. I'm gonna go ahead and tick off another segment oh. on. Wait, spirit before you do, but before you do, can I tick off? Uh, can I do another attune roll in order to commune with these spirits? You know what? You can't, and here's why. Your attunement has gone as far as it can. Now, some other method must be used. Mm. Okay. And do you know and what I'm that method off, is? I, I might not tick off uh, another segment of Spirit <sighs> Cage Explodes if someone acts and does something now. Do you want to set up that bomb? Yes. Juliet, gonna... can he rip the bomb from you? Can they rip the bomb from you? Yeah. I, you know, I, I'll give it to a few. Fine. Yes. Set it up. Uh, uh, and Ophelia, I'm going to go. Setting up the bomb is a multi part process. Okay. It doesn't Great. just instantly get set up, so I'm gonna make a clock for you called Bomb Set Up. Done. Okay. I will begin setting up the bomb, and I'm just putting faith in our friend Valkos that he can disassemble whatever's in there. And this is the thing, so Since what I so have done is, here. right, I have gone into the cage, <laughs> and I have attuned to get close enough. You've gone into the cage? Yes. Valkos. Okay, let me describe what you are seeing. You are um, inside a, like a, a furnace. Like it is so, so, but instead of heat, it's cold. It is mm-hmm. so cold in here. It's hard to move your fingers. It's hard to move your face. There's mm-hmm. no ice, but there's just this uh, bone numbing. It's painful in your bones, cold. Mm-hmm. It's dark, but there mm-hmm. is something moving in the center of this m- uh, cage. Uh, a, a mass that reminds you a little bit of the builder but instead of moving in like intricate ge- geometric formations like the builder does, this mass like is just like kind of punching itself. It's like it's like ripping itself apart and then smashing back together. It's like it's like disgorging itself. It's like vomiting out more matter and then <laughs> eating it uh, once again. It's right. horrifying to look upon, and you must give me some sort of action roll just to stay in here with it. What are you going to do? It's going to be skirmish. And the reason why is because fight. as I walked in, my hand electrified with the feeling of the ghost fighter ability, and I've decided that once I have kind of, the, you know, the attunement was to get close to it. The idea of calming it and feeling like I am one with it. But as soon as I am close enough, my ghost fighter ability kicks in and I'm going to tear this piece asunder bit by bit and even ingesting as well, kind of emulating what is happening and what is feeling because that's what I do. I ingest ghosts, I take them in with my body, I feel them and I go with them because that is what I do. Okay, very good. So here's what's going to happen. I I think that what happens is as Ophelia pulls the bomb away from Juliet and starts to uh, set it, you look over and you realize that the ghost cage, there's just like a submarine type door just open on its side and Valkos is nowhere to be seen. And Una Faros has uh, got a gag in her mouth and she's handcuffed to the stairs and she's like, oh, 
<laughs> like looking at where Valkos has gone inside of the machine. Valkos, you power up your fists. So if I'm, uh, if I understand you correctly, mm. well, here's what I want to say. Before you can try your skirmish roll to continue to break the spirit apart, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that right now, a level two harm, okay, called um, uh, frozen soul. Meaning, okay. like your like the spirit inside you, like freezes solid. Like you're horrified by this thing so much that you can't even interact with it. That's okay. coming at you. I'm not. There's no action roll to avoid it. That's coming at you right now, unless you resist okay. it. No, nope, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. Wait, All right. Is it gonna take... stop him from being able to mess with it, though? Uh, I think that. Uh, let's see. Because if, because the reason, because okay, you know what? Fine, I'm gonna resist it. And what would I need to resist? What would I need to roll, roll to resist? Um, you would need to roll your insight, I believe. My insight. Uh, that's no. right, my friend. Wait, let me, let me make sure. Let me make sure. I mean, resolve is a tune. Yeah. Yes, it, it is your resolve. Forgive me. Forgive me. Man. <laughs> All right, I'm going to roll my resolve. Six. There you go. Yeah. I resisted that with a six, baby. Holy shit. Okay. There you go. So it doesn't freeze you in place, and now the you can move forward spoken. and start to rip this thing apart. Then, but before you roll that, mm. I would love to see how Akfili is doing with the bomb. So Let us set up the bomb. Someone and set us up the bomb. Akfilia, what are you going to use to set up the bomb? I am going to use... This is a... I'm, I, I realize I lean on this a lot, but... Um, dexterously and nimbly with finesse uh, begin to attach wires, throw switches and crank a little dial so that the little um, analog numbers of the timer begin to fl 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 uh, flutter into place. Very good. The threat here is that if you fail, I'm going to click up facility alerted and that will mean the facility has been alerted it's because it's like taking you too much time. So be it. Okay, so risky for standard effect, meaning you will um, uh, remove on, one baby. segment of the you. bomb arm you, clock. Let's go! Six! Yes! <laughs> six, six, well four. done. One segment of the bomb arm clock is uh, is removed. May okay. I, uh, meanwhile? Yes, please, <clears throat> meanwhile. Meanwhile. Juliet looks to the door that's open where she assumes Valkus has gone in. <sighs> I trust him. I trust him. And then she goes to Unaferos. She like caresses the side of her face. <laughs> I have waited for this moment for so long, Una. Ooh. You have no idea. Flashback for a moment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to my lab, where I have um, prepared some ghost oil. A uh, a special formula. <clears throat> it is a, a a colorless fluid that causes affected material to slip into the ghost field. Very dangerous when applied to living beings. Oh my God. I would like to have made this ahead of time. It's one of the creations that we have, you know, uh, uh, recipes, whatever, for already. Let's have a crafting roll. Okay. Uh, what will you use? It's. I think I have to use Tinker for crafting, yeah. Okay, great. Is there a certain tier you need to hit or something like that for Ghost Oil? <sighs> yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I can hit it, actually. Well, this Shoot. is a flashback, so I'll just make you pay more stress depending on how you roll. How about that? Okay. Okay. <sighs> Your right. revenge might be costly. Yeah, I know. It's worth it, right? Ah, uh, yes. I mean, this is your arch enemy. I got Tinker. a six, which yes. means I've got three tier. I need to it to be one tier higher. It needs to be four. Great. So this would normally just be like a one stress oh, wait. Uh, flashback. Oh, this. Yes. No, it's arcane. It's not spark craft. So, yeah. OK. Normally, this would be a one stress flashback because you have a workshop. Mm -hmm. You make things like this. But I'm going to charge you oh, three stress and then you can have three. it. Be all, yeah. <laughs> you can have it be all the way up to uh, the tier that you need. 
I take it. Okay. <clears throat> she pulls oh. out this vial in front of Una. I think it's time that you spent your own living life wandering that which you seek to to trap, to imprison, to hold back for your own power. There was a time when I wanted to help you. All I wanted to do was for the spark rights. And you got in the way of that. You got in the way of my life, my love. You created that. And I will point to where Ecphelia is at the moment. That is your fault. The reason I don't get to have Ophelia by my side anymore is entirely your fault, Una Pharos. So I hope Una, you enjoy your Una time. looks confused and horrified, and you what are you doing? I'm pouring the ghost oil over her body, uh, over uh, her head, uh, and letting uh, it envelop her. Oh, it's it's making her hair all wet and you can already see like her kind of like fading and like flickering in and out of the uh you know the, the real world um and uh you know you, you see like flashes of her skeleton hints of like Selyak Khan as like pieces of her fade into the ghost field you, you see her like musculature then you see her like skeleton and it, as she is fading into the ghost field and screaming as she does so meanwhile inside the ghost cage Valkos you reach forward to this pulsating mass of mm. angry ectoplasm mm. and uh, you are going to try to finish uh, the spirit broken clock with, mm. uh, I believe you said a skirmish roll. Is yep, that right? A skirmish roll. Yep. Okay. Mm. Uh, I'm going to make this uh, risky for mm. standard effect. You will remove mm. the final piece of the spirit broken clock. But if you fail, I'm going to tick up the spirit uh, the spirit clock by two, meaning okay. it will only need one more to break free. How about we uh, exchange position for better effect? Great. Um, not only am I going to tick up the spirit broken clock, but I'm also going to give you a level three, <laughs> a level three harm if you fail right. at this. Okay. Okay. Come on. It's the finale. It's the finale. Yeah. We're going to, yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Valkos kind of walks in. There is a sense of, you know, he's fought his uncle before. He feels that he is, he can do this. He, you know, he, the, the spirit of, of, of confidence is imbued within him as he kind of lunges forward. And he gets a five. A five. He gets a success okay. with a consequence. A success yeah, a consequence with a in consequence. There. Oh God. So here is, here is the consequence, okay? As you are ripping the spirit apart, it turns, it, it suddenly takes a solid form. And the form it takes is of a 20 foot tall, naked, ogre monstrous like version of your uncle have you ever seen attack on titan like yes. what those things look <laughs> oh like oh my god yes <laughs> it looks like that but it's your uh uncle from severos and uh it's incapable of speech it just goes Aah! and um you succeed with a consequence and uh let's see the consequence well the success let's talk about the success first you pull its arm off you rip into its chest you pop open its ribs all of which are just simulations of these organs like mm. kind of constructed out of ectoplasm and as you rip down the um the frame that is the body it's temporarily created and pull off pieces of it those pieces like flitter off and become their own ghost right you're like literally tearing it into smaller ghosts uh but as you do that some of those ghosts shoot out of the spirit cage they shoot past where ecphelia and juliet are up to no good and they shoot <laughs> up the stairs into the main facility i'm ticking off the last piece of facility alerted oh yeah well okay <laughs> and, and with that, then, can I <laughs> can I try something here? Can I um can I literally, as I see them shooting, I begin throwing some out as well. Because yeah. 
I think at the same time, you know, I think as a mass in my head, it's a lot more dangerous, right? The idea of them being like a hive mind. However, individually, because of spark rights and, you know, this this world are, are built to deal with things individually, I have no fear in regards to, you know, individual ghosts. So I'm almost diverting the energy out and throwing them out as well. Right. As it goes okay, along. Yeah, that makes sense. And with your six, I can definitely allow you to do that. So you are ripping ghosts off of this mass and tossing them out of I the... I got a five, but... Oh, that's right. It's a five. Um, they're kind of doing whatever they want, to be okay, honest cool. with, be, <laughs> All right, cool. with you. Okay. Like, some of them are exiting, but some of them are, like, crawling around. Some of them are sitting there and going, Mother! And then, like, ripping their own faces open okay. to uh, reveal uh, skulls. Yeah. Nice. Some of them are climbing on the ceiling like a spider and turning their head 360 degrees. Great. You know, ghost stuff. Ghost okay. stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, as these uh, spirits start to... Um, storm out of the cage everything that's happening down in this basement becomes more difficult as you could well imagine so arming the bomb is suddenly become really uh, tricky because there are literal poltergeists like slamming into it and, and grasping at your shoulders and whispering things in your ear the final thing you hear from Una Pharos is ah and she disappears. Uh, and then uh, you notice like some of the ghosts like sort of going to where she was standing and like biting into something and uh, inserting their tendrils into something. And you see them kind of fade into the ghost field as they do that. Yeah, and maybe part of the reason that this, uh, this bomb setting is taking a little bit longer isn't just that it's difficult, but that Ekfili is watching this with wrapped gleeful attention um, before turning uh, their um, eyes back to the machinery. Uh, and I just want to whip out a spirit bane charm, which I'm adding now to my loadout, <laughs> um, and which keeps spirits away from me personally. And mm. uh, and back to the back to the back to the bomb. Very good. Um, you still need to uh, fill three segments to get it armed. Jeepers creepers. Okay, here we go. What are you using now? Do I have to use something different? You know what? I would have said it would be more difficult, but you had that spirit bane charm, right? That's right. So go ahead. You can use finesse again. Uh, that that, yeah. that item helps you. I got a four, four this time. success with a consequence. <laughs> Damn these consequences. Uh, the, the consequence <laughs> is that I'm ticking off another. Uh, t it's taking time. So I'm ticking off another side of spirit cage explodes. Uh, Wait, what right? happens the if problem, the spirit cage well, explodes now? The problem is not that you'll release some sort of gigantic composite ghost being. The problem is that if it explodes, there will be damage to this sub-basement. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? And uh, which minute. you don't want to be here when that happens. Right? No. And um, the, the, uh, a bomb will go off before your bomb goes off. Valkos. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I'm going to activate my spirit bane charm and and rock out and assist or help with uh, Ekphelia and the bomb. Um, or uh, maybe, oh, go on. As, it, as Valkos comes out, Juliet stops him and says, we have to go. We have to get out of here. What? We have to leave. This place is going to blow. What's it? This yes. could be our only chance. I'm gonna listen and I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna put, take my spirit bane charm and hold it and say, stay close and fuck book it. <laughs> Very good, hold so. Hold on, just you two? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, wait, <laughs> wait. Okay, uh, so they're booking it. You're booking it down the stairs, back into the tunnels you were in before. Uh, where did where is where is Ophelia setting this bomb up? I'm putting it in the room with the jail. Oh, the room that we were in, yeah. I, mm -hmm. So I'm quietly yeah, you speaking seen about any other rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably on a support uh, column of some kind. 
Um, we ju- you just have to find a way. Secure us a way out. It's more important, Val, because we won't have much time. Yes. And I'm going to find my way. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be like, I'm going to go out. I'm going to try and find a way of getting that fucking gate open. So then we're able to get out that gate without causing any sort of fucking pain to us. You mean the the, the big door that was kind of yes. electrified? That yes, with it, the it keys of the yeah, with the keys okay. of the uh, with the of the people. Yeah. Okay, so Valkos runs back down into the tunnels, and meanwhile, um, you are setting up the bomb up here. When suddenly, uh, five guards run in. They are armed oh, with Jesus. guns. They point them at Juliette and Ekphelia and say. Drop everything and stand away from the machinery. They are in spark rights uniforms, not in blue coats or imperial military okay. uniforms. <clears throat> we are in spark right uniforms. That's true. Um, yeah. yeah. I am going to and and uh, I'm going to take our over where Ophelia was. And Unaferos is compl- is gone. Right? Yeah, yeah there's There's just, you know what there is? There's like a pair of handcuffs and a hanging from uh, the stairway rail. As Juliette Belrose goes down to work, um, I stand up with panic in my eyes and look at them like, Are you mad? Are you all mad? What are you doing here? Don't you see what Pharos has done? The whole system is malfunctioning. We're doing our best we can, indicating the bomb, mm-hmm. to, to, get the, to get the system back online. You need to get everyone out of here immediately. But, but for the love of all the gods, you have to get out of here. C- clear the building. Um, so uh, one of the individuals pointing guns at you kind of steps forward, keeping the gun on you. And uh, this individual... Uh, looks uh, very handsome, very mm-hmm. uh, very kind of uh, fine featured. Looks like one of the uh, nobles of Duskfall, but in a in a, an outfit that would uh, indicate Spark Rights uh, membership. And his eyes narrow as he looks at you, and you're gonna have to convince him. And I'm gonna tell you that right now, your convincing has no effect because this is a very very smart guy great using the outfit that you've put on i'll let it go up to limited effect (laughs) let me know how you're going to get it to standard effect and fool him with this lie i go into i i uh use my arcane sight to see into his thoughts and find the lever that will get his mind to move Understood. Um, and uh, you see uh, for a moment um, the thoughts of this gentleman, and you can see, like, I've done it. I've stopped the intruder. They'll give me a commendation for this. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy questioning this guy. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> that's, that's the thought. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy <laughs> questioning. <laughs> I like the, this the attitude to it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. meanwhile, meanwhile, on the so, outside, okay. he's just like, drop the weapons. <laughs> okay. Uh, then, then that is the tactic I choose. This this man is has uh, showed himself to be a prideful and vain martinet, eager for glory. Uh, and so, um, or do, they, do these have na- do they have name tags? Uh, they do have name tags. Well, you would know his name. You would know his name because you... Of course I know his name. And uh, Yeah, of, of course. course. I've reached into his mind. I know it. Of course um, you know that this is Percival Winton. Um, Percival Winton. <laughs> Percival Winton. What a name, bro. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, Percival Winton. I, I know you by reputation. It's times like these desperate moments, like these that call for heroes to rise up. Leaders to take the helm when everyone else is reduced to panic. I think all we need to do is maintain as long as we can. But we need someone to lead, lead in action to get everyone out of here. My God, if all the spark rights can be saved, if you can lead everyone to safety, they will be singing hymns to you in the Imperial City. Just think of the medal that will be bestowed upon you by the emissaries of the immortal emperor themselves. If you can s- stop this calamity from consuming okay, our okay, entire okay. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, and now it's time to roll. And uh, <laughs> that gets you standard effect for sure. Okay. Nice. Uh, I'm going to push myself. 
Oh. Good idea, and I saw Just... how you pushed yourself, so don't worry explaining how. <laughs> Sway um, myself. Come on, man. Come on, baby. Come on. And that is a six. Yes. There it is, a six. Um, he says, so So, what exactly did you want him to do? I heard, like, take take everybody out of the facility is what I heard. Is that exactly. right? That's right. All right. He's like, okay, leaving, you text do it. Leaving us to deal with the situation. In right. This you text do it. You can. I'm going to try to get the facility cleared. Uh, and he uh, runs upstairs with his guards, and that is what they are working like, on. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, Percival. <laughs> You will be remembered. <laughs> uh, and so now all that's left Meanwhile, is for uh, for this bomb to finally get armed. <clears throat> but let's cut to Valkos down below. Valkos, you come to that door and um, it is still armed. So I'm looking at my keys. I'm looking at the keys that I got from oh, the- Oh, that's um, right. You have the keys. Exactly. You know what, Valkos? Slide in the key. Turn it. Boom. The door right. quits humming. <laughs> And um, the door comes open easily, and you see the dark mine shaft ahead of you. And I'm kind of like, right. Okay. Something is shining in the dark ahead of you. A bolt of lightning shoots past your head, and you hear, what? <laughs> I knew you'd try to get out this way. And this guy um, starts moving forward. Um, he has an enormous, like, gun w attached to a backpack, and there is lightning crackling on the end of it. <laughs> he's, short just... and, he's short and chubby, and he has thick goggles, uh, right. and he has a, a messy mop of hair that, that looks like he tried to slick it down, but the cowlick wouldn't go down. I'm going to run for him. You're going to run for him? Yep. He's going to blast you. That's fine. I'm going to go at him, and I'm going to literally tear him asunder. That's the plan. Uh, go ahead and tell me what you're rolling. I'm rolling a finesse roll to dodge the attack. Okay, uh, and then come in for your own attack, right? Yes. Okay, um, I am going to say he's not a really good combatant, but he's really good with his technology. Mm. So um, uh, your finesse roll... Uh, to dodge it is going to be desperate for um, it's going to be desperate for standard effect and here's what I mean by that mm -hmm. if you are uh, successful you will have dodged the blast but you will not have completely taken him out okay cool if you um, fail you're taking a level two harm and but what if I was to uh, no okay that's fine um let me just tell you a little bit about level two harm for you right now. Yep. It would mean, it's m mean minus one die. Okay, that's right, because you have you don't have any harm right now. No, I don't. I do not. Smart. Great. Are you ready? <laughs> Six, baby. Six! Six. Yes! Oh, Easily dodge his blast. Oh, um, you can see a sudden sweat break out on his face as he... Uh, tries to turn the large cannon uh, uh, toward you again because you've moved over to, to where you're flanking him. It's tight quarters down here. What do you do now? I kind of, as I'm close to him, my fine hand weapon is by his neck and I'm like, what a fascinating piece of tech. And look, you've simply brought it to my arms, my hands. Speaking of hands, let me take yours after I take your flesh. And I he hits a button cut. on a uh, on a box that's on his uh, on his oh, belt. You... Right. And when he hits the button on the box on his belt, suddenly a uh, huge uh, electrostatic charge is released from his body. Unless you can give me some sort of action roll right now to get clear, you will take a level two harm. I'm going to Electric finesse two. and back away. So if I see him, kind of, I would imagine I would see him go for it. I'm going yeah. to. I'm going to dash back and sort of allow that thing to happen before coming back in again. Great. Uh, what is the action you're using? Finesse. Finesse again. Okay. Uh, I'll allow it. Go ahead. And when you're ready, you're going to roll. Is it desperate or where am I? It's going to be desperate. Yep. Fucking hell, man. What is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> All right. Success with a consequence. Success with a consequence. 
The consequence is... The consequence is... Let me see if I have any clocks to mess with. Oh yeah, Spirit Cage Explode ticks down one because you guys are still taking too long. <sighs> it's got one more segment and if one more segment ticks down, then there's going to be an explosion before Ekphelia and Juliet are out of there. Meanwhile, up atop, you still haven't armed that bomb yet. I we believe there are two segments left. We're All getting right, to work. You, you've been you've been working. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. While while uh, while Ekphelia was tricking everyone, I think that uh, Juliet was continuing, you know, quietly on the bomb. Okay. Great, Juliet. What are you using? Tinker. Tinker, okay. Um, and uh, I'm going to say that the consequence, if you fail, is that I'm going to finish ticking up Spirit Cage Explodes, meaning this entire room is going to explode before you have set up your bomb. So this is desperate. Oh. I assume. <laughs> <laughs> is, there a way that I, is there a way that I could assist and, and maybe clear two pips? Yes. Um, if you want to assist... Uh, for only to give her more effect. I believe that this is a legal move. If you want to assist, is that true or can you only push for more effect? Come on, man. She can boy, Come on, assist, bro. Please. Well, let me just see now. Don't, Let's don't look it up in the face. rules. Come on. There's <laughs> always time for looking up in the rules. Oh, Here we go. Man. Take one stress and give them plus one die to the roll. You might also suffer any consequences. Oh, sorry. You can't get more effect that way. Jesus Christ. Okay, but I'll, I'll tell get you an what, extra die. I don't know if this is legal, but I'll give you a devil's bargain for more effect. What's the devil's bargain, Jared? The devil's bargain <laughs> for more effect is that the ghosts that are released from the prison start attacking you, and you are going to take uh, level two harm from them because you have to ignore them while you're setting this bomb. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, that happens. Great so, effect. Um, uh, but you can have great effect and get if you if you succeed here. And are you still assisting? Ross? Yes, I'll still okay, assist. So I'll get an extra okay, die. So take a stress, okay. Ekphelia, stress. and you get an extra die. Um, let me uh, define. You're taking that harm no matter what you agreed yeah. to. So yep. I'm oh. going to uh, make the harm um, terrified. Level two, terrified. Is everything that I suffer only psychological? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems that way. There's only one problem that I just realized. You yeah. already have yeah. a harm. Uh -huh. You're weeping and you've lost nerves, so you have less effect. That brings you back down to standard uh, effect. God damn. So we Would you like to take off just one segment? So we can only clear just one. That's right. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Finale vibes. That's should fine. you just be doing this? You you don't have any harm. I don't. Maybe oh I should do. Oh my god! It. You well, should we already be doing, said in the fiction that are, you were. Okay, all right. Doing There's it. still can... another a segment to do after this, so. Okay. Okay. So this is just done. standard. I'm just going to. Okay. You got it. 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 Uh, oh. Success. For success with, with a consequence. consequence. Four is the highest roll out of four. I mean, surely the consequence is a harm, right? I'm doing terribly in this. Oh, in no, the this... consequence isn't a harm. The consequence is a loss of position. You can't finish arming the bomb from here. You must now finish arming the bomb from down in the tunnels. The final detonation of it, or, or the final... Okay. Yeah. So we got to get out. That's a, Okay. You said it was a timer bomb, right? Uh -huh. So maybe yeah. that means you've set the timer and now you have to get out of there. Yeah, but it's it, set it, now. Okay. So the final, uh, instead, so of, the fun instead of setting it for 10, it was one minute. <laughs> right. So the final <laughs> pip going is bomb goes off. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, we are now going to make the final pip bomb goes off. Okay. okay. Uh, are you we, taking we, that harm? We need to go. We need to go. And I'm terrified. Yes. <laughs> So as you do that, I raise up the, the, the spirit bane charm to try to ward off the spirits that are attacking you as to kind of cover your, our retreat. We must go, we must go. In that moment, there's there's one moment of clarity where I turn to Ekphelia and like, when Aferos is gone, she's gone. Yes, no. Yes. To, to celebrate right. it. And uh, 
running right. down run, further run, 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 run. into the yeah back into the tunnels mm-hmm. um you get down to where it's dark and up ahead you see flashing and like the sounds of like lightning bolts uh, hitting uh, the sides of a rock but before you get there suddenly a figure looms in front of you he steps out of the shadows his face an emaciated skull he raises his what arm. The fuck? <laughs> there are hands missing from both of his limbs. You took my hands. <gasps> Is this the spirit of this the, the artist? artist? <laughs> except that except that I'm realizing that neither Juliet nor no. Ecphelia were there. <laughs> Literally like <laughs> Uh and then you see him turn and go. You took my hands. <laughs> and begin moving toward where Valkos is up ahead of the tunnel. Are you fucking serious? What oh, the dear. fuck, man? Yeah, so... And he was uh, really like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, uh... Okay. He, he was saying they took my hands. But yeah, regardless, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, this yeah. spirit is now moving with uh, intent toward Valkos up ahead. Um, if you, uh, so Valkos is trying to take out this combatant that has the <laughs> lightning cannon. If you do not stop this spirit, Valkos will be, uh, have a much harder time dealing with this final combatant. What are if you going to do to stop this? we don't take out the spirit this? going towards him. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's okay. right. I'm gonna, it's not my, not my best thing, but I'm gonna try to attune with it. Yeah. I'm gonna tell Ekphelia, stop him! Okay, Ekphelia. Uh, remember you're attuning or I'm going to really mess with Valkos's like position in uh, in his <sighs> next um, uh, in his next oh, role to take this guy out. I'm going to grab <laughs> and grab Ecphelia and say trust me and uh, slip some quicksilver into her mouth. What's that? Which what does that do? Is a toxic metallic fluid. Uh-oh. Uh oh. But the user's mind opens further to the ghost field. Plus one die to a tune. Um, but you will get a level two harm. <laughs> oh. Oh, is <laughs> oh, okay. that all? Um, okay, it's that's actually out, but, you that's know. wildly interesting. So here's what. Uh, would you think that harm manifests before or after I do this attunement? I think that that harm manifests. I mean, it shouldn't After, affect during, the attunement because this is going to buff your Can attunement. Can it be during? I think it manifests during. Let's do, let's do during. Okay, so I'm going to add a die to this attune. What's the position? The position is uh, risky for standard effect because okay. it's not attacking you. It's attacking someone else. All right, here we go. I'm adding an extra die for the Quicksilver. You don't know what happened. Okay, uh, and, and that goes in my in my gullet. And I'm like, oh, d- darling, uh... <laughs> and as and as I'm as I'm like, what have you my I'm like seeing more into the into the ghost field. And maybe you're a little terrified because you see that there are spirits crawling all over these tunnels now. It is just like alive with death. And here we go. <laughs> oh, my highest Ooh. one was a three. Ooh. Oh, oh. Uh, you oh. try, you try to like touch the ghost field, but there, there's just too much static. There are too many other entities. They, they, they overwhelm your senses. The quicksilver it gave you almost too much of a view into the ghost field, and all of the creatures moving around you overwhelms and terrifies you. Valkos, hold mm-hmm. on, just, just, a, just a moment. This was a physical harm from the quicksilver. Yeah, it will yeah. harm. I mean, it says zoned out. I don't know how you want to. Let's call that a psychological harm. That is important. Okay, great. Oh, you. you are zoned out now. Now I'm Valkos, curious. The gentleman is uh, rearming his gun. Uh, he apparently is uh, like ratcheting up some sort of uh, uh, lever, lever or setting on it, pointing at you again and carefully taking aim this time. Mm. Um. Can I sprint over to Valkos? Yeah, but it, you'll need an action to get there quick enough. Okay. <laughs> um, I would just love to get between Valkos and the spirit that is going towards them, go- going towards him. Understood, um, so that it doesn't I'll, mess with Valkos' role. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll use okay. skirmish. It's the only thing that... 
or, or okay. s- how about uh, wh- how about survey because I am I'm tracking the speed at which this ghost is moving towards him and I just want to intercept before yeah sure yeah <clears throat> okay do you want a devil's position? bargain or anything yeah yeah I'll take a well what's what's my position to start with your position to start with is risky for standard effect you will get in between the ghost and Valkus okay What's your devil's bargain? The devil's bargain is that the ghost gets a free attack against you, which will likely give you harm. So you'll take a harm in order to do this. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay, Mm -hmm. great. But I would love to make it desperate for great effect. Oh, you now you want great effect, huh? Uh, (laughs) You'll take the harm. Swap the position. Yeah, I'll take the harm. You'll take the harm. Let me look at your character sheet for a second. I want to see something. Josephine has, oh, uh, has enough room for another level two harm. Uh, okay, interesting. Um, <clears throat> okay, hey, finale. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll allow it to be. I'll allow it to be great effect. I guess. Wait, let me think this through. Sorry, you want I'm great trading effect. position. I'm trading position for effect. So, but it's already giving you harm because of the devil's bargain. Oh, I got it. You know what? You can have you can have great effect, but you're going to take two harm. That would take you out of the score. Jesus wept, and the the harm is comes either way. That's right. Wait, what? You can have great effect. Here, let me explain what's about to happen. Let me explain. You will you you, if you want great effect, which I don't know why you want, but you want great effect here. (laughs) Standard effect would it's interpose fine. yourself between the ghost okay, and Valkyrie. It's fine. We'll do standard. We'll just do. Okay. Let's just go with standard. Standard, and you're taking the harm. Go for it. Yes. But wait, no. But the harm will take her out of the fucking fight, right? No, 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 not, no, no. Not, this not this harm. This, this will okay. just, yeah. Okay. Okay, go for it. Okay. Here we go. You got this. I got six. a six. I got a six. But you have less effect due to your earlier harm, so you get a five, <laughs> and uh, a four five. That means wait. success. You were talking me out of increasing the effect this entire time. I wasn't talking you out of it. I was just telling you the cost to do that. You made the decision ultimately. You yeah, really hope someone I isn't don't know driving why you're while even listening to, to this, this by the way. I want exactly because of this. Give me silence. Yeah. You uppity players. Some will say I was unfair. Some will say I was a hero today. (laughs) But I am definitely trying to stick to the rules. I told you that you could do two harm to get greater effect. You said, no, I'll I'll keep standard effect. Because. But what we we didn't take into account is that you already have have harms that lessen your effect. Yes. So. I was trying to employ the rule that lets us trade position for effect, right? Right. I understand but that, but I think that this has all happened five, five according to. I think that this has all happened according to the rules. Yes, a success with a consequence. So a success with a consequence is that I'm going to go ahead and say you guys are spending so much time wrestling with these spirits and these things up top that before you're ready, the spirit cage explodes. What Meaning the fuck? The machine up top explodes meaning it sets off your bomb, meaning suddenly all of the rocks start caving in and a giant cloud of dust is blowing down the tunnel. You're about to have the entire city street fall on your backs, fall Jesus down your heads. Jesus wept, man. Hey, Jared, what was the level two harm I took? You took the level two harm of, um, like, uh, let's say, uh, uh, let's say, I don't know. Nerves frayed. That's not a what? good one. Why is it? I jumped in front of the ghost, right? Right, and I think the ghost like is trying to move through you, right? Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. But she was successful. In no, I, you know what? Yeah. I like. I have a better level two harm. Plasm soaked, meaning like you're soaked in the thing's electroplasm, which does weird things to your emotions and your uh, state of mind. Plasm oh, good. E- soaked. Even even better, <laughs> Juliet. Great. Okay. You, um, right. So now you have less effect and you have negative one die, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. On, so, on, on, on things that it it appeal. Yeah. You know what? Applies to. 
Let's so, go all the way back to the fact that the guy's about to fire on Valkus. Mm -hmm. Valkus, his, you're going to get a non-modified roll because Juliet did uh, interpose herself between the ghost that was attacking you. So, Valkos, what are you going to do to take this guy out before he blasts? I'm not even going to take him out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on him and pull him towards the exit. And while I'm doing so, tell him I am saving your life. Okay, uh, so uh, what action are you going to use to do it's that? It's going to be skirmish because I'm going to have to manhandle this man. So He's going to um, try to blast you. That's and fine. And he has turned up the power setting on his gun. If he succeeds Jesus in Christ. hitting you, it will be a level three harm. Thanks, mate. Thank you so much. You know, this game is so much fun. Um, okay, uh, what position am I in? Mean? Oh, great. Desperate. Here we go. Desperate uh, for standard What effect effect. am I having? What's that? What effect am I having? You're gonna have standard effect. You will you, know gra you will grapple him and start dragging him down the tunnel. I'm gonna push myself, right? Good idea. So give me two more stress, mate, for a bonus fucking die. And here we go. And I'm gonna get a six. Thank you a very six. much, sir. Thank you yeah, very much, you knock sir. Knock his gun out of the way uh, before he's even able to pull the trigger. You grab him. You say, "I'm saving you," and you begin to drag him down the corridor as stones begin to fall in this mine shaft. And now we come to the final moments of the score. How do you get out of here before the entire building comes down on your heads? Exilia, run. Well, so. Uh. I'm you could lead a group way. action if you'd like, since you're all trying to do the same thing. Someone could kind of go this way and lead the way out of the collapsing tunnels, or you can each take your own chances and get out of the, this. Is this is a threat that's coming at all of you? And I'm going to tell you what the threat is. It is a level three harm that I'm going to call buried alive. Okay. Yeah, we got to get out of here. Um. So I have two more pips of stress left. Um, so if Shit. I were to lead a, gr a group action and someone were to fail a roll, I would be donezo. Um, but only one person, if we both fail, then you're fucked. Right. And if I fail, then no, no, <laughs> no, I just get crushed. Uh, or we all get you, crushed man. because it's a group. I action. believe in you. It's a group action. I believe in you. Okay. Finesse seems to be the thing. It's speed. It's running. It's dodging. Mm -hmm. Finesse usually has to deal with fine dexterity. It might deal with climbing, definitely with like getting into a locked door. But does it have to deal with just running? I don't know about that. Describe how you're using finesse to get out of okay, here. Okay, okay, okay. Look, we knew that we were setting off a bomb in this place. And we knew that we had a timer set up. We knew that we were probably escaping through this tunnel. Um... Uh, I've only got two. Mm. like in those documents <laughs> the, the schematics is there a reinforced portion of these tunnels that we already know about that we could seek refuge in that is not gonna um, like a it's a little bit more stable metallic certainly armor. certainly but you gotta get there okay how are you getting there with your crew well, if finesse don't do it, then uh, um, finesse could do it if you could describe how you're using uh, fine manipulation or uh, precision <clears throat> to get there. Because running full tilt, I guess, would be skirmish or prowl, maybe. I think maybe. I mean, I would go I then zero, prowl. I have zero dice in finesse. Do you want to go with prowl? Let's go with prowl then. Very good. <sighs> no, you. <laughs> okay, I'll use something I'm worse at. No, no, just, just, <laughs> those, just those are the just, options. You know what? The thing is, though, finesse. stick with your finesse. I would, I would argue because you're we're dodging skirmish, shit, though. right? I mean, what's no. your skirmish? My skirmish is one. My can I argue that three because I'm closest to the exit that yeah, I take the group action? This. Sure. So I would say that I have pulled this man into a, into like a headlock and I'm charging through and I'm just like get the fuck out like let's get out you're and the leader at this I, moment I'm, I'm I'm literally leading the, the the group towards the exit of where we need to get to 
and it's just a sense of again it's a fight against time it's against the situation that we are in. I'm it's a fight boxing against with time. I am literally fighting and wrestling. Would with you say that you're maybe? Would you say that you're maybe like pushing stones out of your way and and like using your hand to hold up the ceiling in certain places? And I that would kind of say thing? I would not. I would not even. I don't even. I think it's more of a sense of. It's it's more internal. It's more of the sense of I am. I am. Yeah, physically sort of fight, physically holding that with this with this guy. I think let me if maybe I could say that this. I'm saying I save it. I'm trying to save your life, and he kind of sees the light, and he's helping me holding this shit up. So I'm trying to get everyone to run through, and that is the group action. The skirmish is the idea of fighting art for our very fucking lives. It's a close close brawl with death itself. Oh, as you love. As you Countless. know, you can use any action to do anything in Blades in the Dark. But you're supposed to stay honest. You're supposed to use appropriate actions. The definition of skirmish as I'm fighting for my life is way out there, I think, on the outer bounds of what skirmish is used for. I'm going to allow it, but I am going to give you a limited effect on this group action. Oh, and that limited serious? effect means that I'm going to roll a chance die, a fortune die, and someone is going to be left behind and have to get find their own way out. So you all roll the group action, but someone gets left behind and will have to make one more action roll to possibly escape. Or are you break. fucking, are you, this is fucking evil, bruh. All right, but I okay. know, I'm, a, I'm evil. And That's I just me. love that like countless bodies that Valkos has killed off guards or whatever. But this guy, something about you, this guy, something about this guy, Why something about this guy. I'm him? not kidding. I'm, there's something about this guy. I'll take it. So what is it? What is the action, my friend? The action is going to be desperate right? because there's a level three harm coming at you and it will be for limited effect, meaning you won't get all of your people out. Let's first have Juliet and then Ecphelia roll their skirmish. Success. Right, we got success. Okay, success go. from Juliet. And a That's failure a from we're gonna, Ecphelia. We're gonna, we're gonna discuss Valkos. this in the next season, but it's okay. That's fine. Okay, go on. Okay, now it's time for your skirmish to get out. How about we devil's bargain it? Devil's bargain it? Mm. We're already you, potentially leaving someone behind. What else? No, but I want to. I want to increase the effect. So what? Tell, give um, me. Give me something. Oh, Almighty GM, DM, please. What is it that I can save my two friends who I care deeply about to increase the effect to standard? I'm thinking about it, and I think that you can uh, lose this prisoner. Lose this prisoner and the tech that they have. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. You read my mind. Okay. Cool. All, All right. right. Here we go. If he fails, the building comes down. It was a success with a consequence. Eight. Success with a consequence, but you got standard effect. All right. What is the consequence? Hmm. All right. I know what the consequence is. You guys run through the collapsing tunnels. Up above, you just hear <laughs> as the entire building is collapsing. You run through the tunnels. Stones and pieces of street are smashing down on your heads. You finally make your way to the parts of the tunnels that are no longer like unstable mine shafts. You now are back in worked stone. The walls around you are no longer like loose rocks. They are, they are heavily uh, fortified. You find the manhole cover that leads up out of these section of tunnels. You climb out and the consequence is that there are five blue coats waiting for you. And you hear one of them go, there they are, boys! And they move forward with billy clubs and guns. And the remnant stands on a dark street facing down the cops. 
And that's where we'll end the season. <laughs> really? Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Prison time for our prison, heroes? Prison break? Yeah. Next. <laughs> or can the remnant just beat up a bunch of cops? It's, uh... Yeah, fuck them. You know, it's something we might find out oh next my God. season. We didn't die. We are no, not. We I'm not die. looking good. I tried. I tried to kill you. You really We're very did. Very close. You We're really very close. did, and I can mm-hmm. feel it. I can feel it. But climax didn't vibes, die. everybody. Oh well, my god. All I can say is that I'm just so tremendously grateful and proud that this crew of three, with a slight assist from Sydney a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Put together 25 episodes of fantastic gameplay. We played Blades in the Dark. It's such a great game. Uh, and so we had good. so much fun with it. Thank you guys so much. I want to keep playing forever. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's do it. Let's come back for another <laughs> season. Um, but for now, we must say goodbye for 2022. So... Uh, I want to say thank you to our friend from the UK, Abu, who uh, constantly, uh, you know, uh, gets on the call with us right at his dinner time. <laughs> 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 and uh, I want to say thank you to Josephine McAdam, who actually learns the rules and remembers what happened in the last <laughs> time. <laughs> and I want to say thank you to Ross Bryan, who manages to keep his seven characters straight. <laughs> Uh, and do a different voice mm. for each one. Mm. Sort of. I've been Jared Logan. Thank you, Glass Cannon Nash, and we will see you very soon. Goodbye for now. <laughs>